are you completely pissed off by seeing videos like saturn in the seventh house venus saturn conjunction seventh lord in debility in exaltation ah so many other videos related to marriage and you are still not able to decipher if you will have a good marriage or not all right so good married life is one of the biggest blessings in kali yuga which is becoming incredibly more and more rare okay as time is passing by so here are 10 indications if you might have a good marriage <laughs> and when i'm speaking all these combinations and placements and exceptions you'll realize how difficult it is uh, to have why is it so difficult because things are incredibly tough uh, i'll tell you as as you are hearing i'll tell you why it's very difficult to have these combinations okay why 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 and then you'll realize why you will very rarely find some couple who will say you know they don't have any problem in problems in marriage okay. now when i say problems in marriage i don't mean you know the generic problems you know no two no two human beings can be perfect or uh, completely compatible but when i'm saying good married life uh, it means you know that you are not you don't curse yourself that you got married to this person and uh, you know you are relatively happy and you are you have a decent good married life okay so that's what i mean by good marriage it's not like you are in the stars every morning <laughs> all right so now many of you uh, many of us might have some of these combinations but the more the, you have among the 10 the better it is all right and please let me know how is your married life which of the 10 combinations uh, that you have and apart from these 10 if you have if you are aware of any other combination then also please write it down in the comments i would love to know and if you know somebody who has had a bad marriage then also write down their combinations do not mention name and other details just write the lagna moon sign and the placements all right for you and for your known person <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to exotic astrology and if you're new then don't forget to hit the subscribe and hit the thumbs up if you will enjoy this video and for consultations regarding your horoscope you can go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him all right so now the most important thing when it comes to marriage this is non-negotiable okay the first and the most powerful or the the easiest way to determine how will be a person's married life is to see these three houses the second seventh and eleven the second house is the house of your family the seventh house is literally the house of your marriage and the eleventh house is the house of your of gains so lavastan so if you have a good second seventh and a good eleventh which is again very difficult because you will not find in most of the charts you will find that it is highly probable that one of the houses is not very good okay now what do i mean by a good second seventh and eleventh i mean if there are natural benefits in all the three houses could be empty also that's fine just because it's empty it does not mean it's bad and then the lords of the second seventh and eleventh they should also be well placed okay well placed in the sense not in dustanas uh, they could be sitting in each other's houses that's best or they should not be in debility or enemy sign or something like that or they should not be afflicted which is again very difficult okay so if the second lord is afflicted or badly placed then your marriage may be fine but your unit as a family is not good if the second lord is good but your seventh house is not good seventh lord is not good so your family may be doing good but your marriage may suffer and if the 11th house is not good and the second and seventh are good then your marriage is fine your family is fine but somehow you don't feel you are growing in life and you you regret the decision you made for some reason all right so these three houses are paramount all right so if you have good second house seventh house 11th house that's if you have this and you don't have any of the other nine things that we'll discuss you are there halfway or maybe you are done <laughs> you can quit this video and you can move out from here all right 
नंबर टू अ स्ट्रॉन्ग लग्ना एंड अ स्ट्रॉन्ग लग्नेश वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज मैरिज इज अ वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट कमिटमेंट विच यू मेक टू वन पर्सन टू स्टे टूगेदर फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ एज पर द स्क्रिप्चुरल ट्रेडिशन ओके सो a good lagna and a good lagnesh will give you the power to maintain your commitments irrespective of incompatibility difficulties challenges which will always be there okay <clears throat> so if a person does not have a good lagna or a lagnesh then the person is like you know wishy washy yeah today i'm there i i don't feel like staying with you you know after one year after six months or after 10 years of live in relation you know i somehow don't feel you know that Mm, that spark is there anymore within us and you know? mm, suddenly i i don't know what happened you know like 9 uh, years um 11 months 29 days it was fine but the last day of the end of the 10th year you know i just lost feelings okay <laughs> so so beware when you are doing compatibility matching you are checking everything and you are not checking the boy or girl's lagna the lagnesh then the person may may suddenly tell you oh actually you know i have changed my mind you know maybe it's not my for me you know maybe mm. <laughs> so <laughs> you never know they 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 are like uh, people with a bad lagna a bad lagnesh they may hop on to other people like dogs you know like today with this person and that every 2 3 years they will keep changing their partners okay because they can't stay committed it's it's very difficult and nowadays in kali yuga you know because of this tinder bumble and all these apps you know they're just chuk, 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 swiping right left and that's it new partner every morning <laughs> and then they are wondering going on checking in youtube you know oh what are some signs of narcissism narcissistic partners you know what are why am i in depression they are wondering okay so <laughs> all right number 3 very 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 important this is not directly a combination for good marriage but this is a combination which helps in a good marriage which is good trines what do i mean by good trines you know good fifth house good ninth house <clears throat> so if the fifth house is good then there is higher probability to have good children if the ninth house is good it is you have higher probability to grow together in your spiritual journey and if both are good then you you have a complete family unit okay so you are there you your spouse then your children and as in the vedic scriptures it is said you know uh, there is like this a putra hinam gyam shunyam okay so a uh, married life without children is incomplete it's useless okay so the trines are always associated with marriage all the time ninth house has all the rituals and all this and the fifth house is very important because that's the house of children that's what is progeny that will continue your lineage when you will not be there your children will be or they are supposed to offer oblations to you and to your ancestors okay that is why children are very important so do not forget the fifth house and the ninth and also the fifth and the ninth they are also houses which give you uh, good qualities okay like they will give you a uh, spiritual progress you know more awareness they will give you forgiveness they will give you tolerance and all these things a person with a bad train bad fifth house bad ninth house is intolerable they are they are extremely fault finding crooks of the highest order they they cannot see anybody happy they are jealous 24 by 7 they are envious they are like they are like dark snakes they are worse than animals okay they cannot see anybody happy so if you have bad trines the same quality will manifest to your spouse and then you will always be competing with your spouse you know you will be envious if something good happens you will be jealous you will be like you know ah. <laughs> number 4 good navam sha my god this is like this is this is gold <laughs> good navam sha why because navam sha is the chart of your spouse wrong it's your chart <laughs> it's your chart when there's nobody around all right see there's nobody around me now 
what's going on right so what do you do when there's nobody watching you <laughs> right so and somehow the spouse is always watching you <laughs> So that is why the Navamsha, they say is the chart of the spouse, but it's nonsense because it is your chart when nobody is seeing you and the spouse is always seeing you, you know, uh, somehow or the other. So that is why if you are a crook when nobody is watching you, so eventually your crookedness will come out in marriage. You cannot hide it for very long. As Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur who is the founder of the Gaudiya Mats uh, tradition, he said, you cannot pass stool and be as if, you know, nothing happened. The smell will come out eventually. So a bad Navamsha is like a person who has passed stool in his own pant and he's like, you know, sitting there. So what happens? Eventually, people run away from him, right? Number five, very, very, very important, natural benefits in the Kendra houses. Because see, the Kendras, they will tell you, do you get support in your day-to-day -day activities in life? You know, in, in the important tasks, your health, you know, there's some health problem, <clears throat> do you get support? Now, you need not get support from your spouse, but mostly your parents will not be there. They will leave this world one one time your children may not be there or you may not have children for some reason because it takes a lot of karma to have children. It's not easy to have a child. Okay, Or you may not have friends but primarily your spouse will be there with you. Primarily. Not in Kali Yuga, of course. Maybe not. <laughs> but generally they are there. So then the fourth house, which is you know some something to do with the home, house, you know, property, something like your real assets. Tenth house is your professions, and seventh house is your marriage. So, if there are there are natural benefits in kendras, it means somehow because of your good karmas, you know, somehow things work out a bit relatively easier, in an easier way when it comes to the day to day activity. So you will get house help, or you know, you will get help from relatives or friends or somebody or the other, you know. So then the stress is a bit lesser for your spouse. Otherwise, if your Kendra houses are filled with natural malefics, like, you know, there's Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu, Sun, and all this, guess who has to bear all this? Your marriage, your spouse, right? And that makes things exponentially more difficult for your marriage. Okay, so, and also, if you use your astrological common sense abcd a planet in the first will aspect the seventh a planet in the seventh will aspect your first if mars is in fourth he can also aspect your seventh and if saturn is in your tenth from there also he can aspect your seventh right so a planet in kendra will most likely somehow you know aspect the seventh house either either ways okay so then the problem will increase okay so if there are natural benefits, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Number six, very, very, very difficult, almost impossible to find in a chart. Write it down in the comments if you know somebody who has this. Unafflicted Venus. Venus is not conjunct or aspected by Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, Mars, the Sun. Or Venus is not even in debility or you know in dustan but let's keep that aside for now unafflicted venus venus shows your ability your capacity to accept love and give love if there is affliction to venus then there is obstruction in that so either you are not receiving love or you are not able to give love okay one of the two is happening or maybe the or maybe both is happening right so therefore if Venus is unafflicted, then you have higher capacity for reciprocation of love with your spouse. If not, then it's spoiled. Okay, so then, as I said, one of the two happens and you are unhappy. So then, Ram Harose. <laughs> Number seven, what is this? Well-placed seventh lord of D1 in the D9. See, the seventh lord of D1 chart should be checked in the D9 chart. Very important. Why? Because 
that will tell you how much good karma do you have in context of your marriage because the d9 chart shows you among your entire sanchit karma right which is your total karmas what kind of prarabdha are you carrying in this life the good and bad so the seventh lord of d1 which shows your married life how is that placed in d9 that will tell you how much good pious karma how much punya or is associated so for example if the seventh lord of d1 is well placed in the d9 then what can happen is suppose you have a problem in marriage then somehow miraculously some counselor or you know some relative somebody will come and give you some good guidance and you will be out if it is badly placed the opposite can happen your married life is doing fine and then somebody comes and speaks crap to you against your spouse and you believe that person okay it's bizarre, but that's how it works. So do not forget the seventh lord of the D1. Not in the D1, but in the D9. Okay, do not forget. <laughs> Number eight, very, very, very important. In traditional astrology, this is always seen. So if Jupiter is aspecting your moon or seventh house or seventh lord, very good for married life. Why? Because wherever Jupiter aspects, Jupiter gives you some... Uh, blessings which you don't get otherwise normally jupiter gives you luck and you know some kind of it's like some div some divinity is there okay divinity doesn't mean like you know some uh, magic but somehow things work out you know so if jupiter is aspecting the moon you know you have greater possibility for tolerance and you you are more forgiving you are more adaptable all these things are there and if Jupiter aspects the 7th or 7th lot again, miraculously things work out sometimes. Number 9, 7th lot connected to the trines in D1. So if the 7th lot and the 5th lot or the 9th lot is somehow connected, then this is phenomenal because this means you will bring the good qualities of the trines literally inside your marriage. So if 5th lot is in the 7th, 9th lot is in the 7th, something to do with either the 5th or the ninth, and the 7th house, okay? So, don't confuse this with the 5th and ninth. The 7th house or the 7th or the lot should be associated with one of either the 5th or the ninth. okay? That's the rule. So, many times people say, oh, my 5th lot is in ninth, and ninth lot is in 5th. You know, why is it not helping in my marriage? No, it may not help you in marriage unless the 7th lot is involved, okay? So, if there is exchange of the 5th on the 7th or 5th or 9th, then you are actually blessed to use a large portion of your good karma in your marriage. You know, So that can essentially mean you have a very cooperative spouse, you know, or you are getting support from your in-laws or somehow, you know, things work out. I mean, there could be thousand examples, but somehow it works if the trines are associated. Okay, That is why the trines are known as Lakshmi Sthan. And number 10, last but not the least. In fact, this should be above number one. <laughs> Favorable dashas in your chart, which are not, which means planets which are not connected to the 6th or the 10th. These two houses break marriage. And favorable dashas means planets situating, situated in the 2nd, 5th, 7th, 9th or 11th or lording these houses, okay, by planet or by nakshatra. Then your married life is you are you are literally blessed and this should be back to back so so suppose you are married when your uh, sun dasha starts okay so then sun moon mars rahu jupiter these these four or five planets back to back should be good otherwise imagine sun moon mars is good so six years 10 years 16 years and suppose your mars is not very good mars is average so after 16 years, your married life will take a hit. And then after that again, 7 years. If Rahu is a disaster, then you can get divorced. Okay. So it depends on the favorable Mahadashas. Very, very, very important. Right. Do not forget the Shas. If you forget, then it will lead to a disaster. All right. It's true not only for marriage, but for all other events of life. Okay. So please analyze all these symptoms. And as I said, if you don't have any of these, don't freak out, don't, don't abuse 
the comment section to uh, you know bring out your negativity but understand these are some of the combinations okay there are thousand other combinations for good marriage bad marriage it's a never ending journey but these are some combinations that i have always seen working and also many of these are mentioned in many you know classics and many traditional astrologers books and in real life experience i have seen this always working you know? so do not forget point number 1 and point number 2 i in my opinion these two and number 10 so good second seventh eleventh good lagnesh and favorable dashas if you have these three forget other things okay bye bye all right so thank you so much for your patience if you made it till the end and you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you are new and for consultations you can always go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him for sure